Here we go, Jason. Back from Europe, fresh off the Triumph. Now get us up to speed as I ask you the same questions everybody else did on how this came together. Okay. Um, in, in, a, in a hurry. It, everything happened so quickly. It was, um, you know, just uh, a random Wednesday afternoon we got the call and they said, uh, we need you... Uh, you know, we want you to come race this bike for us and be part of our team, and we have to know on Friday or by Friday. And, you know, it was kind of a no-brainer. It was an instant yes, but the kicker was we had to leave, like, five days later for Portugal. So Always make sure your passports are up to date. Yeah, mine was, thankfully. And these guys just what? They found you in the phone book, or did they contact you through your manager, or did they just somehow yeah, they, they got your phone number? They, they called my dad, you know. Um, I think they, they probably got his number uh, from, uh, from one of the guys in Europe and, and just, uh, you know, it, it came together so fast and, and it was like a whirlwind, you know. One day I'm, I'm sitting at my, house, or my dad's house in New York uh, watching it for him while he's down in Florida partying. Uh-huh. And, uh, and the next day I'm, like, getting ready to go to Portugal, so... You know, I'm one minute I'm unemployed, the next minute, and I've got the greatest job in, in my eyes in the, in the world, you know. How was the Triumph? It's a triple. It's not a four. You've been racing fours forever. Give us, yeah. uh, what what does that bike do better than than the others that you like? Um, it's kind of, uh, and I know this is going to kind of sound weird, uh, but... It's sort of a cross between a twin and a four cylinder. Like, and I know, yeah, duh, it's a three cylinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good joke. But, but uh, no, really, it's got the, the torque of a twin and the top end of a four cylinder. It's pretty, uh, pretty unbelievable. And the power, I can't believe the power they get out of those things over there. I mean, it's, it's unreal that a 600 could be that fast. It's more like a 750. Well, I've wondered that about the spec of the bike over there, that some people had said that the Super Sport over there is more like the old Formula Extreme was over here. Yeah, it seems to be the case. I don't know the exact specs or details of the engine or bike so much, but with the level of electronics they have, the level of suspension and, you know, all that stuff, it really is kind of like an, an FX bike, almost more so, you know, even faster than what we had over here for FX. Learning the track, you went to a new track, but there was the new track at Topeka, so I mean that kind of probably buffed up the uh, learning a new track skill again, right? Uh, Portimao made Topeka look like an oval. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the the track was just so up and down and twisty and turny. I mean, there was uh, it, so many technical sections of the track that were so difficult to learn. I didn't get my head around some of the turns until the final day, and even so, like the last day. I still, uh, I still haven't gotten the final corner figured out, you know, so that's something I need to do ASAP when I get back there. Yeah, because that is a super fast corner, and time is either made up or lost in huge chunks, eh? In my case, it was lost in huge, huge chunks. I think I was losing about three, three quarters of a second in the last, uh, the last turn alone. So, wow, wow. Yeah, I got to work on that. Okay, um, yeah, the, people were saying, I guess, that it's kind of barberish in its undulations. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, but in the, the amount of undulations, in the amount of the elevation, yeah. it's more Laguna Seca-ish. Oh, I mean, okay. we're talking corkscrew, you know, from the top of the corkscrew to the bottom of 10, but in one shot, kind of like Road Atlanta. So it's uh-huh. like, there's some pretty crazy stuff. I mean... The, the video game doesn't do it justice. The TV doesn't do it justice. When I got, you know, the videos and watched the videos, I thought, eh, no problem. You know, it's just uh, just another track, got some hills in it, no problem. There'll be some blind stuff. But when I got there, you know, and you're coming over this crest, it, fourth gear, 100 plus miles an hour, and somewhere just before the top, you have to start tipping in to, like, a downhill for top of fourth gear left-hander. It's like... Whoa, you know, you got to back up a second and, you know, think about this. So, yeah, it was definitely a challenge learning that track for sure. Did riding in the wet help at all? Uh, actually kind of kind of hindered the progress a little bit as far as learning because my brake markers were different. Right. And, 
you know, everything was, was, you know, tipping points were different, but it was a good experience because I had to, you know, get the experience on the Pirelli rain tires. And also, uh, it rains quite often in Port Mata here, so it was good to get that experience too for the race weekend if it is wet for a session or for the race. Yeah, and that brings up tires in general, the Pirellis in general. Mm -hmm. You hadn't ridden those spec tires before ever. No, and um, I was actually really surprised at the level of grip that they had. Uh, That's one of the things I'm still trying to find the limit for them so that I can, you know, get to that point where I can slide them around and be confident and steer the bike with the rear a little bit coming out of the corners or, you know, just, just let it spin, you know, have a tight corner or whatever. So I'm still, still working on that too. You will be at the next test at Phillip Island or do they have another test in between? No, then our next, uh, next outing will be the test, uh, February 21st, I believe um in phillip island so you know we're just kind of getting geared up for that and uh you know getting ready to go yeah you have to anticipate now life seriously on the road if life on the road in the ama was life on the road now it's going to be life in the air and life on the train and (laughs) trains planes and automobiles yeah it's uh it's a lot you know a whole nother level of travel so you know it's um it's all the travel you know, just kind of planning ahead and make sure you're well rested. Mm-hmm. And uh, and other than that, just the mental fortitude to get through it all and, you know, be able to fly for, you know, 16 hours going on to Australia, arrive like two days after you left basically because of the international date change, yeah. and then get on a bike in a couple of days and, and go turn fast laps. So it's definitely something I'm going to have to get reaccustomed to, you know, the, all the the length, lengthy travel and stuff like that, but uh, poor mile really wasn't too bad. I actually handled it better now than I did when I was racing and living over there right. uh, some years ago. Yeah, and with just leaving your dad's house on the east coast, it was only like a two or three hour uh, time change to do that. Oh, well, you know, I was still five to oh, five to still. Portugal. Yeah, okay. um, five to Portugal, six to the rest of Europe. But, uh, but yeah, it wasn't too bad at all. I mean, I kind of, you know, I, I stayed up the day that I got there, so that right. was important. You know, usually you get there, you're all tired, and, oh, I'll just take a nap. Little do you know, that nap is going to wreak havoc on sleep for the next week. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and so you'll try to go to Australia a couple of days early so you can try and get some of that twisted around. Yeah. I think, uh, I think we're going to go, like, four days early, actually, because I don't want to mess around with nothing like uh some of the horror stories i've heard about the you know japan time change australia time change waking up in the middle of the night like you know ready to fight someone to get to the fridge to eat or something like that right. you know and then you'll just stay there because the test is kind of backed up bumped right up against the first race so you'll stay there and by that time it'll be full acclimation race on that's that's the idea you know uh, just kind of work with the team some during the week and try to get our setup a little bit more dialed in maybe go see uh melbourne or something i think yeah. is is a couple hours away from phillip island and just uh, just check it out um about the tracks what tracks have you ridden have you been to phillip island before or what other tracks have no. you looked at on circuit are there any even the one in england um yeah uh of course miller Right. Um, so that's uh, one. And then uh, I've been to Magnicourt, Assen, Silverstone, which is the new British track, yeah. um, Bruno, and Valencia. So six of the 13. So that's good. not too bad. Yeah, but the three of the ones that I haven't been on are, are the three Italian rounds. So I'm a little nervous about that because i know some of the italian riders really have those tracks dialed yeah. and they they rip on those tracks so you know we're gonna have to get out and hopefully we'll have maybe a test on one or two of them and then just be able to get out and go good at the race but the if i don't have a test or an opportunity to to get on the track it's definitely something i gotta get there learn the track and just get up to speed as quickly as possible 